Hello Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Katzler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode number 258 of Ask Dave. Today is another stay-at-home special as the nation and the world go through this uh, little problem that we have with uh, uh, the epidemic, the pandemic that is swirling around us. We're safe at home here and doing well, thank you. Um, I decided today that I would do something I've actually been putting off for an awful long time and the company involved has been very patient. Uh, Times Microwave makes uh, premium coax cable and the LMR400 and the LMR240 are very commonly used in amateur radio. Well, as it turns out, they have their own set of tools to use with their coax, plus they have their own connectors to use with the coax, which are fully crimp. You don't have to solder anything. And I thought I would make a little ADS-B antenna for inside here uh, as part of my budding aviation interest. And um, so I'm going to make this from just one end. Of the, it only needs to be about that long. Uh, and the other end, I'm going to put one of these uh, LMR240, I'm sorry, LMR400 connectors on it. So let's dive in and see how that's done. Uh, this is from Times Microwave. Uh, that's Times Microwave. Dot com, okay, an Amphenol company. Uh, everybody's owned by somebody else these days. This is their little pouch they give you for the tools. And what they have sent me here, this is a CCT02, which is a cable cutter. Now, I will tell you already that it's obviously designed to put the cable right here and then cut it but I find it easier to cut the cable if you put it down here. That is a very sharp blade in there. Then there is the coax stripper tool, which is the CST coax stripper tool, 400 LMR. So we'll just open this up, I think. There we go. And there is the stripper tool. It's a complicated looking little thingy here and uh, we're going to figure out how to use that okay and then there is the actual crimp tool which is quite heavy this is on the box as a c tool or crimp tool 400 and 300 okay now this has on it um, i've been corrected these part here are the jaws and these are the dies and there's two sizes in there uh, that you would use for LMR 400 and I guess LMR 300 and it gives the 429 as the size of this one right here. So that's the crimp tool. Also we have the connectors themselves. The connectors consists of a piece of heat shrink tubing which we'll use and the ferrule and the actual connector itself. Now the way the connector itself works, it does not unscrew off of here. It's always like this, so you're going to screw the whole thing on. And uh, if you look deep down inside of it, okay, there. Now you can see down inside of it, there's a little receptacle for the center wire. It goes in there and it's got a little crimp, but the connector then just goes on it. And of course, you've got to have all the lengths exactly right. Well, that's where this tool comes in. Um, this right here is labeled clamp and this crimp. And you can unscrew that slightly and put it into different positions and we want to put it in crimp because that's what we're going to do. Now for this what we have to do is the CST 400 cut. This says cut number two. Okay cut number one is going to be right here. Just so you can see what's going on here. I did a cut before and the old piece of cable is 
still in there there we go it's out okay now we're gonna put this in here all right and we're gonna hold this down and when this comes all the way down we pull okay so we've got a little piece of copper coated aluminum right there in the center now we're going to make the other cut by going in the other end let me just make sure that's all clean in there it is I think okay Now we're going to stick this, this thing just keeps wanting to bend. Okay, so we're going to stick this in here. And as we stick it in, we will turn it. And it is peeling off the uh, rubber coating. And it gets down to the end. and. There's the rubber coating that was on it. Now we're done with the tool and this is ready. We're going to pull back the wire from here all the way around. We're not unraveling the braid. We're not trying to unravel it. We're just pulling it away because then this goes on here. Boy, that's a snug fit. There. Now, by pushing it on like that, we push that little end that was sticking out, we push that into that center piece. Okay. Now, we take the ferrule which of course has gone several feet away from me on the cable. Okay, now we're going to oh, get that over that. Okay, it's all the way. See that? He came all the way to the edge of the braid. If it doesn't come back that far, it's not on all the way. Then we push the ferrule up and we note that we may want to, and I think this was in their videos, just trim this a little bit so it doesn't stick out so much. But be that as it may, we're going to push this ferrule on here. We don't want to push it in such a way that we push that end piece off. So we get it up to there. Okay. And then we put that in here. Now the instructions say, my, if that'll go in there, I have to go in here like this. That's supposed to be all the way up and you're supposed to crimp nearest the connector. So we'll crimp. And I'm going to stand up and crimp. Okay, and there we are. Now, the fact that I got a little bit of wire sticking out here is just my uh, being just a little bit sloppy, but that is on there like super firmly. Now, we've got the heat shrink tubing, which will go over this whole thing. Okay, now, um, my heat gun is not where I have the camera. So I'm going to take this camera down. And apologies to those who got seasick when I was moving this camera before. Let me put the camera up here. Okay. And we're going to use the heat from the solder rework station. 
which is over here. So we need to turn on the station and then turn on the hot air. And the hot air is coming out of here. It's not that hot yet. Well, let's get it up. Okay. Am I showing it? Yeah. Okay. Boy, that thing just shrinks right up, doesn't it? Okay, I will turn this. Actually, it'd be easier, I think, to come at it from over here. You gotta be real careful with this heat gun because this is major hot. Okay, that's done. We'll turn that off. The fan there is gonna stay on a little bit while uh, the thing cools off. So now I'm gonna put this back. Okay, and let's look at the finished product. Now, next time I'm going to be a little bit more careful about trimming those little extra wire pieces off of there. But you see that this is now nicely and solidly put together and will connect very well to the SO239 connector. And that's all there is to it. It worked really well and I might add, really simply. So I'm gonna give a definite high five to the uh, Times microwave way of doing things here. And I'm gonna put these tools now um, into this bag. This, I think, needs a... Aha! There's a little connector there, so that can stay closed. And then we can put uh, more connectors. Now this rubber slide is uh, something they included that if you have to slide the cables through a rough spot or something like that, you can use this stuff. I did not have to use it to put that thing together. It was a very nice snug fit without it worked very well. All right, here we are. I'm impressed, okay. Um, I haven't really sat down to do that and I've, I've had this thing for a while. I apologize to Times Microwave. Uh, they sent it to me a while back and they didn't follow up and so I didn't follow up and you know how that goes. I'm quite forgetful and, and I don't think that forgetfulness is going to improve if I, well the forgetfulness will improve as I get older. It's the re remembering that will get worse. Uh, so. Uh, there's a nice little thing for Sunday just to uh, connect a coax connector uh, on some LMR 400 using the LMR 400 house brand uh, connectors. They look like this. They're Times Microwave. They've got the installation instructions on the back. They also have videos on their website on how to do it. Uh, they make a very nice, I'm not going to go so far as to say waterproof, but they make a very nice uh, connector. And each one of these does come with the heat shrink tubing, so they intend that it be used. Uh, pretty nice deal. Okay, time to toot my own horn. <laughs> Nah, I can't do it like an old-fashioned trained person. Anyway, go to uh, decastler.com slash support and look for different ways that you can support this. Um, that's the end of tooting my own horn. 
Now, the uh, other thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the suggestion has been, since I have so many questions, viewer questions that I haven't gotten through, that for the duration of the pandemic, I will do a second uh, live stream every week. I'm tentatively settling on Thursday at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, U.S. That would be 9 uh, Eastern, 8 Central, and 6 uh, Pacific. Now, uh, this will be a boon for those over in Australia, uh, but it, which will be very early in the morning there uh, rather than in the middle of the night. Not so much a boon for those in Europe and I apologize for that. Uh, but of course, you can always watch the replay. Uh, the replay is always available right after uh, the live stream is over. You can replay it. So until we next meet, stay safe, wash your hands, be good, call your friends and tell them you love them, and get on the air. Until we next meet, 73.